to order. Prayer. Today we will pause for a moment of silent prayer and reflection, and following that moment, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Secretary will take the roll. Senators Abler, Anderson, Bach, Benson, Bigham, Carlson, Chamberlain, Champion, Clausen, Coleman, Swazinski, Dames, Dibble, Dreheim, Dornick, Duckworth, Dietzik, Eaton, Eichhorn, Eakin, Fate, Franzen, Friends, Gazelka, Goggin, Herr, Hoffman, Housley, Howe, Ingebritsen, Isaacson, Jasinski, Johnson, Johnson, Stewart, Kent, Kiffmeyer, Klein, Coran, Kunish, Lang, Latz, Limmer, Marty, Matthews, McEwen, Miller, Murphy, Nelson, Newman, Newton, Osmick, Pappas, Port, Pratt, Putnam, Rarick, Rust, Rosen, Rude, Senjum, Thomasoni, Torres Ray, Utke, Weber, Westrom, Weger, Wickland. Pursuant to Rule 14.1, the following members intend to vote under Rule 40.7. Senators Anderson, Bigham, Carlson, Champion, Clausen, Coleman, Dibble, Duckworth, Eaton, Eichhorn, Eakin, Fate, Her, Ingebrigtsen, Isaacson, Johnson, Stewart, Latz, Marty, McEwen. We will begin on the agenda with the second order of business, executive and official communications. Uh, the communications listed in the agenda were received. Please make note of them. There's no further action required on those communications. Next, we'll move to the third order of business, messages from the House. We have one message to be read by the Secretary. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following Senate file as amended by the House in which the amendments to the concurrence of the Senate is respectfully requested. Senate file number 1098, a bill for an act relating to economic development. Senate file number 1098 is herewith returned to the Senate. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate do not concur with the amendments made to House or to Senate File 1098, and that a conference committee of five members be appointed by the subcommittee on conference committees on the part of the Senate to act with a light conference committee appointed on the part of the House. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Next, we'll move to the fifth order of business, reports of committees. Senator Gazelka. Mr. President, I move the committee reports printed in the, the uh, agenda be adopted with the exception of the report pertaining to appointments. Discussion on the Gazelka motion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. <laughs> Senator Gazelka. Mr. President, I move the committee report pertaining to appointments be laid on the table. On that motion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Next, we'll move to the seventh order of business, second reading of House bills. The secretary will read the House file number. House file number 1065. Second reading. We'll move to the eighth order of business, introduction and first reading of Senate bills listed in today's introduction calendar are Senate file numbers 2450 through 2457. These Senate files are given their first reading and referred as indicated. We'll move to the ninth order of business, motions and resolutions. We have one author's motion uh, listed in the agenda on that author's motion. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Senator Gazelka. 
Uh, Mr. President, I move a brief recess for the purpose of appointing conferees. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. The Senate is in recess. Senate will come to order. Senator Gazelka. Mr. Priv uh, President, is there a privileged report at the desk? There is. The Secretary will read the report. Senator Gazelka from the Subcommittee on Conference Committees recommends that the following Senators be and they hereby are appointed as a conference committee on Senate File Number 1098. Senators Pratt, Rarick, Housley, Draheim, and Eakin. Um, on, that, on the motion read by the Secretary, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Senator Gazelka. Mr. President, I move House File Number 2253 be taken from the table. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. Senator Gazelka. Mr. President, pursuant to Rule 26, I designate House File Number 2253 be made a special order for immediate consideration. Members, uh, we are on House File 2253, Senator Utke. Thank you, Mr. President. And members, uh, House File 2253 is this year's Workers' Compensation Advisory Council Bill. Um, and just for a little background on this, um, the items brought before us in this bill today are items that have been, have reached complete agreement at the Workers' Comp Advisory Council between members of business and labor. Um, each year, and this year was even, had more than normal, the number of items that came before the council, which includes the requests and desires from the department too. But there were a lot of items on the table, a lot of items to discuss, and these are the items that complete agreement was reached and therefore put into the bill. There are other items still under discussion. Um, they will continue to be discussed and worked on at a future date, and probably will, some may show up next year. Others will just not ever make it because that's what happens. There isn't a total agreement. So with that, I would like to uh, tell you a little bit about what's in this bill today, and most of it is coming from the department with their requests. And uh, i just uh, go through quickly um, by the section number. Section number one makes changes to the temporary total disability minimum wage compensation. It amends statute to provide that the minimum weekly compensation is the lesser of 20 percent of the maximum compensation rate or the employee's actual weekly rate wage. And that would take effect October 1st. And I will highlight a few of the effective dates just because they vary um, because of how work comp uh, works. Um, if they are just uh, after final enactment, I won't uh, probably mention that. But with this section, when we talk about the minimum um, weekly um, compensation, as an example, how does uh, currently that minimum is $130 a week. The new calculations based on the statewide average wage, uh, and this would look back to 2020, would mean that that minimum wage now would be $235. So it's uh, boosting the minimum uh, by about $100 a week for those that are on temporary disability. Uh, section 2 allows for penalties to the provider who bills injured workers personally for treatments of a work injury. The language provides penalty payable to the assigned risk safety account against a health care provider that bills an injured worker for treatment in a violation of the workers' compensation law. Requires note, and uh, with this, if uh, an injured worker does get billed personally when it should be a work comp issue and paid through and by work comp and there are um, 
requirements. I mean, it isn't just, they aren't just going to send the uh, provider a bill or a penalty and say, hey, you messed up. There will be provisions to send them a notice and correct this. And if this pursues, uh, we have, the department now has the ability to um, attach these penalties and try to get the bad actors out of the system. We, we don't have many, but there have been a few that have gone way too far, and this will give the department uh, a, another tool in their toolbox to uh, hopefully clean up the system. Sections three and four say that the uh, payment to providers will be based on Medicare inpatient prospective payment system. It's a web pricer is the name. It basically establishes a common baseline for inpatient hospital services, articles, and supplies. Um, and this is just so that there's a baseline across all providers uh, to start from and then the percentages uh, according to the procedures will be adjusted from there. That's effective October 1st. Sections 5 through 7 cover the ambulatory surgical center fees. It amends the statute related to the payment of treatment for work injuries in an ambulatory surgical center. Describes the multiple procedure payments, reduction of rule, uh, instead of cross-referencing the Medicare regulation, it clarifies when payments is based on um, the actual charges instead of a fee schedule amount um, effective the day after enactment. Uh, section 7 and 8 outline prohibited practices and penalties. Amend state statute to clarify application of existing workers' compensation prohibited practices. Adds new prohibitive practices providing fraudulent written information to the department or employee and for failing to pay benefits or correct behavior on a claim. If a penalty for this conduct was paid or became a final order. Effective July 1, uh, Section 10, prompt first action report amend statute that beginning March 15, 2020, the department shall publish a report providing data for each insurer on the total number of insurers' claims and the number and percentage of insurers' claims with prompt first action. Allows the commissioner to exclude incomplete and unreliable data. And finally, the five most recent reports must be published on the department's website. Section 11 addresses and talks to subpoenas uh, of the Department of Labor and Industry employees that they're not permitted. Statute is amended to prohibit subpoena to the employees of the department unless the department is a party to a claim or enforcement action or provides vocational rehabilitation services to an injured worker. If the employee picks up the phone and uh, just answers a question about statute, rules, regs, something that has nothing to do with um, being a party to any type of a case or a claim, they can no longer be subpoenaed because it's just been tying up uh, employee time for something that uh, does not play a part in any action. And finally, Section 12 um, extends the sunset date for the current workers' compensation COVID-19 presumption statute, something that was passed off this floor last April and uh, has been ongoing for 17 different job classifications. It was set to expire May 1st of this year. Um, this inclusion will now extend it to December 31st of this year. So with that, Mr. President, that is our work comp bill for this year. Discussion on House File 2253, Senator Abler. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, uh, you know, I would have liked a little longer description of some of those sections, Senator Rutke, but that's okay. I think it's, you got the highlights here. Uh, I do have a question about one of the sections um, about the uh, penalties for providers who attempt to collect, and I mostly just want it clarified. I don't think the language is written as clearly as it might be. Um, but I just want to make sure the intent is clear so clinics aren't caught short. Um, and it says if you attempt to collect from a person who's got a work comp claim, then that's a bad thing and the commissioner has to send them a note and all that. But um, sometimes uh, I just want to make sure that it's really clear that sometimes a person comes in and says, oh no, it's a work comp. 
and then they never file a claim. You don't have any way to even know who their employer is necessarily, and there's no file, and then they just don't want to pay. Uh, or they didn't even, they're innocent in, you know, about the payment part, but they just, so the provider really is unclear. And so um, I'm going to ask you to yield in a second. Um, but, it, but it's because on line 4.15, it says the violation occurs only if the provider, et cetera, was informed that the treatment or service uh, should be submitted to a work and work compensation insurer. To meet that bar, the person has to just say, oh, it's work comp. But then later it says the commissioner to get the penalty. So you're in violation, but the penalty only happens if the uh, commissioner writes a letter to you, which for some reason must only be provided once. I don't understand that, but that's, that's the work comp advisory council clunky writers they got there. Uh, but there has to be a written notice that hopefully you got, because sometimes things don't arrive, somebody didn't sign for it, or was it certified mail? Um, and so I get the intent, but I would like you just to say, Senator Utke, if you would, what the intent is, is not to go after the casual error, the casual, we don't know, really know what's work comp, but it's for people who are, who are clinics that are really doing the wrong thing, that know they're doing the wrong thing, and that's would make me feel more comfortable. Thank you. Senator Abler, are you asking Senator Uckey to yield? I am, Mr. President. Okay. I couldn't tell because your comments I was in the middle of my... Through, to and through the president. Oh, so I... A friendly reminder to address your comments to... You're so friendly, Mr. President. president. Thank Senator you. Senator Uckey, will you yield? Senator Uckey. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you, Senator Abler. Um, yes, uh, what the question that you're asking for, I would like a little more clarification, is that there will be that communication between the department and the provider so that there isn't, if you made a mistake, you made an error, you missed the mail, that you're going to get a penalty. And that act this has actually been on the table for a year or two at the council, and that was one of my big issues when it first came, is they just kind of wanted to be able to blanket it. If something came in, um, it could just go out, and it was blanket coverage amongst all of our providers. And so we drilled down a lot on this, and the fact was, there are just a handful, maybe a dozen providers over the last number of years that have actually been a problem like this, where they've gone as far as filing a lien against somebody's property because of an unpaid bill. And while that was going on, there were communications to say, hey, this isn't right. So this is set up to just strictly go after those bad actors after they've had a number of communications to say, this is a work comp injury. You deal with us rather than going after that injured worker. But uh, hopefully we've got everything built into this for protections. If not, we will uh, uh, make sure that it uh, does get adjusted. But I think we are at a really good point right now to make sure that uh, errors and just mishandlings and stuff do not result in a penalty. Senator Abler. Thank you, Mr. President, Senator Utke, and thank you, Mr. President, for the friendly reminder. You know, 16 years of habits. I'm getting better in my six years here, but thank you very much. Further discussion on House File 2253. The Secretary will give the bill its third reading. House File Number 2253, a bill for an act relating to workers' compensation. Third reading. Final discussion on the bill. Senator Gazelka. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to talk just a, a little bit about the Work Comp Advisory Council. Uh, decades ago, there was constant battles and, uh, over what should be done. Each side never always trying to outdo the other side, depending on where uh, power went. And it was just, it never worked well until the Work Comp Workers' Compensation Advisory Council. And now the, the two sides have to work together. And frankly, I think we get really good. Uh, policy as a result of that. And then if there is a mistake, that council comes back together and makes it better the next time. And so uh, just to offer my support, but also uh, the fact that it's been very successful over the years. Any further discussion? Members were on final passage of House File 2253. Seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will take the roll. Members in the retiring room and room 303, please come to the chamber to vote. Mm -hmm. 
Members in rooms 206 and the President's office, please come to the chamber to vote. I'll call on Senator Frentz to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Frentz. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Bigham votes aye. Bigham votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Carlson votes aye. Carlson votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Champion votes aye. Champion votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Clausen votes aye. Clausen votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Dibble votes aye. Dibble votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eakin votes aye. Eakin votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Fateh votes aye. Fateh votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Herr votes aye. Herr votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Isaacson votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Latz votes aye. Latz votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Marty votes aye. Marty votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator McEwen votes aye. McEwen votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Newton votes aye. Newton votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Port votes aye. Port votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Putnam votes aye. Putnam votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Rest votes aye. Rest votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Frentz. And Senator Wickland votes aye. Wickland votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson votes aye. Anderson votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Coleman votes aye. Coleman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Duckworth votes aye. Duckworth votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Eichhorn votes aye. Eichhorn votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Housley votes aye. Housley votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Lang votes aye. Lang votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Rosen votes aye. Rosen votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Westrom votes aye. Westrom votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senjum votes aye. All members having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 66 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Gazelka. Mr. President, pursuant to Rule 26, I designate the following bills be made for special order for immediate consideration. The members, the sheet is on your desk. The next bill up for consideration is number 70 on general orders, Senate file 1807. Senator Matthews. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senate File 1807 extends the sunset of a 2020 session law that established a temporary process for filing mortgage documents when county offices were closed due to COVID. The process enabled Xcel Energy to meet a short filing deadline and proceed with a bond offering. Xcel Energy makes a bond offering every year, and one of the terms of the transaction is that the associated lien documents be filed with the Secretary of State and with county registrars within five days of the bond pricing. Xcel has properties in 47 counties, so before COVID, those filings were made in person to ensure they were processed within the five-day window. But with county offices closed, the in-person filings weren't an option. The 2020 law simply provided that the filing made with the Secretary of State satisfies the bond requirement. The filings were still made with counties and the mortgage registry taxes were still paid, but the bill has a tw December 2020 sunset and with county offices still working remotely, an extension of this process is needed. Uh, there was no opposition to the bill last year and the process worked well. The company was able to lock in on very favorable rates and issue $700 million in bonds to finance infrastructure in Minnesota. Uh, Excel is planning a bond offering for May that will put another $750 million into the Minnesota economy and this bill will facilitate that. Uh, the new sunset date is June 30, 2022 to accommodate a 2022 bond offering in case county offices are still operating remotely. Uh, and the bill is made retroactive to ensure continuity between the December 2020 sunset and the enactment of this bill. Uh, so that's an overview of this, members, and I ask for your support on Senate File 1807. Discussion on Senate File 1807. The secretary will give the bill its third reading. Senate file number 1807, a bill for an act relating to real property. Third reading. Any final discussion on the bill? We're on final passage of Senate file 1807. See no further discussion. The secretary will take the roll. <laughs> Members in the retiring room and room 303, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in the President's office in room 206, please come to the chamber to vote.
I'll call on Senator Jasinski to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson votes aye. Anderson votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Coleman votes aye. Coleman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Duckworth votes aye. Duckworth votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Eichhorn votes aye. Eichhorn votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Westrom votes aye. Westrom votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Housley votes aye. Housley votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Rosen votes aye. Rosen votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Lang votes aye. Lang votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senjum votes aye. Senator Friends. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Bigham votes aye. Bigham votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Carlson votes aye. Carlson votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Champion votes aye. Champion votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Clausen votes aye. Clausen votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Dibble votes aye. Dibble votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Eakin votes aye. Eakin votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Fate votes aye. Fate votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Her votes aye. Her votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Isaacson votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Latz votes aye. Latz votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Marty votes aye. Marty votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator McEwen votes aye. McEwen votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Newton votes aye. Newton votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Port votes aye. Port votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Putnam votes aye. Putnam votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Rest votes aye. Rest votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Torres Ray votes aye. Senator and Friends. Senator Wickland votes aye. Wickland votes aye. All members having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 66 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's title agreed to. Next bill up for consideration is number 97 on general order, Senate File 443, Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate File 443 simply adds hospice care providers to the list of required health care providers whom law, enforce, law enforcement must notify when the provider begins caring for a registered predatory offender. Uh, I'd like to thank Senator Putnam uh, as co-author on this bill, and I'd appreciate support uh, for this uh, Senate File 443. Discussion on Senate File 443. The Secretary will give the bill its third reading. Senate File Number 443, a bill for an act relating to public safety. Third reading. Any final discussion on the bill? We're on final passage of Senate File 443. See no further discussion. The Secretary will take the roll. Members in the retiring room and room 303, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in rooms 206 and the President's office, please come to the chamber to vote.
I will call on Senator Frentz to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator thank, Frentz. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Bigham votes aye. Bigham votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Carlson votes aye. Carlson votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Champion votes aye. Champion votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Clausen votes aye. Clausen votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Dibble votes aye. Dibble votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eakin votes aye. Eakin votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Fateh votes aye. Fateh votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Her votes aye. Her votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Isaacson votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Latz votes aye. Lats votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Marty votes aye. Marty votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator McEwen votes aye. McEwen votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Newton votes aye. Newton votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Port votes aye. Port votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Putnam votes aye. Putnam votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Rest votes aye. Rest votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Frentz. And Senator Wicklin votes aye. Wicklin votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson votes aye. Anderson votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Coleman votes aye. Coleman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Duckworth votes aye. Duckworth votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Eichhorn votes aye. Eichhorn votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Housley votes aye. Housley votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Lang votes aye. Lang votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Rosen votes aye. Rosen votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senjum votes aye. Senator Jasinski. And thank you, Mr. President. Senator Westrom votes aye. Westrom votes aye. All members having voted who have the desire to vote. The secretary will close the roll. There being 66 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. The next order up is House File is number 12 on General Orders, Senate File 193, Senator Benson. Thank you, Madam President and members. Senate File 193 is the Psych Compact. Uh, you remember we voted on this once during one of our many special sessions. Uh, what it does is allow state licensed psychologists who are in mutual compact states to practice for a limited amount of time in another state. And one of the lessons that COVID has taught us that this kind of flexibility is really important. So if you are a, a young person who is at college and had to come home for COVID, or even if you're just home for a summer break and you want to continue your relationship with your psychologist, you would be able to do that under this compact. Um, members, this doesn't change our licensing standards. Uh, the people who would be practicing in the state of Minnesota for this limited time would still have to meet our standards of practice. Some important things in this bill, um, it also expands uh, access to people who are in rural or underserved areas by making it easier for them to access um, high quality uh, psychologists uh, for whatever their needs are. Um, let's also keep in mind, members, that more flexibility is going to become the hallmark of care. This compact has been passed in other states and it's time for us to join. There is a document on your desk that will tell you a little bit about compact states uh, that are that are part of this psychology compact. My apologies. I'm not doing very well at this this morning. But um, key thing 
the states all agree to the same standards and terms. The language that's in front of you is the language that's been agreed upon by other states. We do this for other medical licensing compacts. Uh, it protects patients because it keeps the state standards in place. If there is an adverse uh, action against a license in one of the compact states, that professional is prohibited from practicing in other compact states. There's a requirement for, of notice to the other states. That data is protected in the state of Minnesota under our data practices laws. Um, so our providers would get notice uh, our providers would give notice to other states through our boards. And so members, I'm happy to stand for questions. I hope that you will join me in supporting this compact to allow more flexibility in practice as Minnesotans travel in the military or as our counselors want to serve college students in other states. Um, thank you, Madam President. I'm happy to stand for questions. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Senator Limmer. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, would the author yield for a question? She will yield. Senator Benson. Excuse me, Senator Limmer. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, Senator Benson, I was reviewing the bill. I like the bill, but there's uh, it seems like we're making an exception to our practice in writing law in the state of Minnesota with this particular bill. As you can tell on page one, article one of the bill, we are recognizing purpose. We don't usually do that while we write statute in Minnesota. And uh, despite the fact that I'm a member of the Civil Law Committee, uh, I don't recall the discussion. I might have been stepped out at that moment, but nevertheless, uh, why do we have uh, two pages of purpose written into this bill? Senator Benson. Um, thank you, Madam President, Senator Limmer. We did have a protracted conversation about statements of purpose, and we did look at some of the other compacts that were put in place, and they did include some statements of purpose. I know that we have generally deleted statements of purpose, um, and Senator Limmer, I think you and Senator Latz and myself would agree that they are generally not a good idea. My concern is that this is language that has been agreed to by the compact run out of CSG, and if we deleted it, it might put our standing in the compact at risk, and so that's not to say you don't have the right to move the language out. I am just concerned about the impact this would have on our ability to enter the compact. Madam President. Senator Limmer. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the reason why I bring this up is uh, I'm rather familiar with the Uniform Law Commission. They've uh, give us a number of legislative proposals that we vote on from time to time. It's designed to create um, a fluid motion between the relationship between the states. And when one can have uh, as near exact uh, specific laws, oftentimes very complicated areas of law, it's necessary to allow language that's more uniform. They go through quite a discipline in conferences in order to write bills like this. Um, but having said that, uh, I do want to leave on the record that purpose or findings are not something we usually do in writing statute. And I think it's important just to realize that in this particular case, uh, I believe it's it's so unique that purpose, uh, when we discuss purpose, at least the way it was described to me, when we describe purpose or a finding in this particular provision, that it was so unique that it, I think we all came to the conclusion that it probably was allowable in this instance. Uh, but even, even uniform law from state to state uh, has variation. And uh, I, I hope we just don't accept proposals from uniform law commissions simply, simply word for word 
and uh, without the proper scrutiny. Uh, this particular provision, Senate File 193, I particularly uh, will be in support of, despite the fact that the purpose I don't necessarily see as necessary, but I don't see it as, as uh, critical if it remains. So, uh, Madam President, I'm, I think what I'm really doing is putting a notice out. Please, members, don't write purpose and, and findings into bills because we just simply don't do that in Minnesota law with very, very few exceptions that we have in our statute books. M Madam President. Senator Benson. And to Senator Limmer's point, I wholeheartedly agree that well-crafted legislation doesn't need a purpose statement, and I have raised this with the attorneys at CSG, that purpose statements aren't something we do, and I would appreciate them not making that part of their standard going forward um, so that this issue doesn't become a habit. Uh, your well-written language in law doesn't need a purpose statement, but Madam President and members, Again, I'm going to reiterate my concern is that if we delete this, we wouldn't be entering the compact. Is it uh, further discussion? Senator Franzen. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, Senator Benson, for bringing this bill. It, it has been something that uh, has been not controversial. Usually compacts could be because uh, we like to do our things uh, the Minnesota way. And when it comes to health care, we certainly want to have our standards upholded, upheld um, it, versus other states. But in this case, uh, this was language that was agreed upon. I'm less concerned about the purpose language as I am about more uh, the discussion about liability using Minnesota law. As an attorney, we, we certainly want to make sure that our standards are, are being used when it comes to any um, issues arising out of this compact. Uh, but all, other than that, I know that that will come back in conference committee because I know the House has a, or the other body has a different uh, approach to that. Uh, I do encourage members to support the bill and hopefully we'll be able to find uh, some common ground on that, in that regard. So members, I, I encourage a green vote and thank you, Senator Benson, for bringing this forward. Senator Benson. And Madam Chair, I think when you have the votes, you should stop talking, but I just want to clarify um, the qualified indemnity defense and indemnification only applies to the members of the board. So just so that we're clear, it doesn't change the standard for those practicing in the state of Minnesota. But I do know that there are some concerns that were raised, particularly about the um, place of adjudication, if it's home state, or if it is the state where the compact is held. And so I understand that, and I hope that uh, we can get clarification from CSG as to what their intent is. Um, most compacts do give options, and this one doesn't. But I still believe, on balance, this bill is better for Minnesotans, even with those concerns, and I hope I can earn the support of the body. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Secretary will give Senate File 193 its third reading. Senate File Number 193, a bill for an act relating to health occupations. Third reading. Any further discussion? The Secretary will then take the final, uh, final the roll on the final passage. Senators in retiring room, please come vote. GOP caucus room, please come vote. Capital 303. Members in the President's office and Capital 206, please come vote.
I will call on Senator Friends to report the votes. Thank you very much, Madam President. Senator Bigham votes aye. Bigham votes aye. Senator Carlson votes aye. Carlson votes aye. Senator Champion votes aye. Senator Champion votes aye. Senator Clausen votes aye. Senator Clausen votes aye. Senator Dibble votes aye. Senator Dibble votes aye. Senator Eaton votes aye. Senator Eaton votes aye. Senator Eakin votes aye. Senator Eakin votes aye. Senator Fateh votes aye. Senator Fateh votes aye. Senator Herr votes aye. Senator Herr votes aye. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Marty votes aye. Senator Marty votes aye. Senator McEwen votes aye. Senator McEwen votes aye. Senator Newton votes aye. Senator Newton votes aye. Senator Port votes aye. Senator Port votes aye. Senator Putnam votes aye. Senator Putnam votes aye. Senator Rest votes aye. Senator Rest votes aye. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. And Madam President, Senator Wickland votes aye. Senator Wickland votes aye. Senator, Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Madam President. Senator Anderson votes no. Senator Anderson votes no. Senator Coleman votes yes. Senator Coleman votes yes. Senator Duckworth votes yes. Senator Duckworth votes yes. Senator Eichhorn votes yes. Senator Eichhorn votes yes. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes yes. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes yes. Senator Housley votes yes. Senator Housley votes yes. Senator Rosen votes yes. Senator Rosen votes yes. Senator Lang votes yes. Senator Lang votes yes. Senator Senjum votes yes. Senator Senjum votes yes. And thank you, Madam President. Senator Westrom votes yes. Senator Westrom votes yes. All members having voted who desire to vote, the Secretary will close the roll. There being 65 ayes and one nay, the bill passes and its title agreed to. Okay, members, the next bill for consideration is number two on general order, Senate File 151, Senator Kipmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I'm pleased to offer Senate File 151, which will increase uh, privacy for lottery winners here in Minnesota. And Mr. President, before I go further into explaining the genesis for the bill, I'd like to offer the A3 amendment. Senator Kiffmeyer offers the A3 amendment. The Secretary will report the amendment. Senator Kiffmeyer moves to amend Senate File Number 151 as follows. Delete everything after the enacting clause and insert. This is the A3 amendment. 
Senator Kiffmeyer, to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Um, the language that you have before you in the A3 amendment is negotiated language accepted to by the Minnesota Lottery and by the House chief author. Um, what this language does here, uh, it puts into statute second chance uh, drawing prizes, which uh, is the custom of the lottery right now, but it also puts it in statute. But in regards to privacy in particular, the name of the winner of a lottery prize that includes a cash payment greater than $10,000 and the name of a winner of a second chance drawing prize that includes a cash payment greater than $10,000 are private data under Chapter 13. It does allow for the name to be made public, but only if the winner provides written consent after the director of the lottery has informed them of their winning of the lottery. That is the A3 amendment and asks for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kiffmeyer. Is there any discussion on the A3 amendment? Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would just like to say I know that this issue has been um, worked on for several sessions. Uh, I know this has been carefully negotiated by a number of stakeholders, and uh, I appreciate that it, we have gotten to a point where I think everybody's pretty comfortable with it, so I would encourage members to support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President. I think it's really important at this time for folks to understand the, the reason and the purpose why for increasing the privacy of lottery winners. Uh, increasingly in years past, uh, having your name known uh, was less subject to harassment, but in these past days, things have greatly changed, and there are several uh, things that have happened in the meantime. So I'm going to just talk about a few of them because I think it's important for folks to understand this. A uh, matter of fact, a judge in a case which involved the mystery winner of the $560 million lotto case, um, the woman preferred to be anonymous. We understand why. Um, the judge, however, ruled in this court that for the court to make the name public, uh, would require it to ignore the significant media attention this case has received, the numerous documented bad experiences of other lottery winners, as well as the bevy of unsolicited emails, phone calls, and in-person visits already directed at Ms. Doe through her attorneys. Even though her name was private, through attorneys she did. So this judge ruled that the mystery winner can remain anonymous finding that the right to privacy outweighs the public's interest in knowing the identity of the winner. And you might think maybe this is just one case in regards to a very uh, large winner. Not so. Uh, there is Yuruj Khan, who was found dead of a cyanide-induced heart attack in Chicago a day after the check was issued for $1 million scratch-off. Gregory Birch, who was killed during a home invasion in Georgia after winning $430,000 in the state lottery, or Mr. Whitaker, after he won $315 million in 2002, thieves stole hundreds of thousands of dollars from his car twice, drained his bank account, and numerous other bad things happened to Mr. Whitaker. Now, it's interesting, uh, sometimes you think of where everybody knows your name is good, but not always, and in this case, many times it is not. We have Mr. Shakespeare, Lakeland, Florida janitor, won a cash payout of $17 million. He appeared for cameras, an oversized check, great publicity. He spent or gave away most of his money until he met Doris Didi Moore in 2008. She tracked him down, befriended him, within a few months became his financial advisor with control over his remaining money and his home. Well, that's not the worst of it. Shakespeare disappeared in 2009 at the age of 42. His body was found nine months later encased in concrete, buried behind the home of Moore's ex-boyfriend. Shakespeare had been shot twice in the chest. The 44-year-old Moore, convicted of his murder, is serving a life sentence. No matter the amount, uh, without question, and the right to privacy does. Now, there are folks in the lottery who might say, 
Uh, we want to be able to have your name for publicity, but as the court ruled in other cases, publicity is the right to privacy is outweighed by the need to have this privacy. So members, I'm gonna ask for your support. Without question, the lottery does protect the accuracy and the integrity of the lottery in an internal matter. They have systems in place within already where they make sure that there's no monkey business going around. But the right to privacy and the public safety for these winners way outweighs. As a matter of fact, from the emails, many of them from people, matter of fact, since I introduced this bill over two years ago, I've continued to have messages from people, have you got that passed yet? I suspect this may possibly increase sales, unlike others who say this might decrease them. So Mr. President and members, I ask for your support of Senate File 151 as amendment. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion on the A3? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The amendment passes. Well, is there any other discussion on the bill? Seeing none, uh, the secretary will give Senate file 151 as third reading. Senate file number 151, a bill for an act relating to state government. Third reading. Is there any other discussion on Senate file 151? Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll on final passage. Members in the retiring room in the Capitol 303 will come down to vote, please. Members in the President's office in Capitol 206 can come to vote, please.
I'll call on Senator French to report the members of the uh, the votes for the members voting remotely. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Bigham votes aye. Senator Bigham votes aye. Senator Carlson votes aye. Senator Carlson votes aye. Senator Champion votes aye. Senator Champion votes aye. Senator Clausen votes aye. Senator Clausen votes aye. Senator Dibble votes aye. Senator Dibble votes aye. Senator Eaton votes aye. Senator Eaton votes aye. Senator Eakin votes aye. Senator Eakin votes aye. Senator Fateh votes aye. Senator Fateh votes aye. Senator Herr votes aye. Senator Herr votes aye. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Marty votes aye. Senator Marty votes aye. Senator McEwen votes aye. Senator McEwen votes aye. Senator Newton votes aye. Senator Newton votes aye. Senator Port votes aye. Senator Port votes aye. Senator Putnam votes aye. Senator Putnam votes aye. Senator Rest votes aye. Senator Rest votes aye. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. And Senator Wickland Senator votes aye. Senator Wickland votes aye. I'll call on Senator Jasinski to report the votes for his caucus. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson votes aye. Senator Anderson votes aye. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Coleman votes aye. Senator Coleman votes aye. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Duckworth votes aye. Senator Duckworth votes aye. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Eichhorn votes aye. Senator Eichhorn votes aye. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Housley votes aye. Senator Housley votes aye. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Lang votes aye. Senator Lang votes aye. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Rosen votes aye. Senator Rosen votes aye. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senator Senjum votes aye. And thank you, Mr. President. Senator Westrom votes aye. Senator Westrom votes aye. All senators voting that have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. With there being 66 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. There you go. Next, we'll move to the 13th order of business, announcements of Senate interest. Senator Dietzik. Thank you, Mr. President. I received a copy of a letter from the Minnesota Business Partnership saying that, once again, Minnesota is leading national and international media reports and that they are encouraging us to take action. They say that we believe action is required by the 2021 legislature to make Minnesota a leader in effective and fair law enforcement policies, practices, and behaviors. They say that we simply cannot fail in that mission because too much is at stake, and I agree with them. Will uh, Majority Leader Gazelka yield? Senator Gazelka will yield. Senator Dietzik. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Gazelka, earlier we have talked about, you have mentioned having hearings, and we've talked about um, the need for hearings, and so do you have any more update on those hearings on hopefully law enforcement reform? Senator Gazelka. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Dietzek, members, uh, uh, we're, we're tentatively aiming for a week from Friday, uh, and one, part of the reason that we're just trying to nail it down is working through getting the budget bills done. This one potentially can take some uh, energy and time. We do believe it's important, and so that's the, the tentative plan. And so, you know, I don't want to absolutely 100 percent commit, but I, that's what we're aiming for. Senator Dietzik. Uh, thank you, Senator Gazelka. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I think it is really, really important. The eyes of the world continue to be on us. I do think that we can be leaders and make some changes that are the start of significant reforms and systemic. We can make changes that remove systemic racism. So thank you, and I look forward to those hearings. Without objection, uh, the following senators will be excused from today's session. Senator Newman, I have announcements from Senator Benson, followed by Senator Franzen. Senator Benson. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, the Committee on Finance will meet at noon today. I uh, believe we're slated for Capitol Room 123. Further announcements, Senator Franzen. Thank you, Mr. President. And if uh, Senator Gazelka can yield. Senator Gazelka will yield. Senator Franzen. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, just to elaborate from my colleague, Senator Dietzik, who talked about uh, the hearings that you are, your party start is going to um, engage in. I would just uh, like to uh, make sure that members know that just today the U.S. Department of Justice and the U.S. Attorney Merrick Garland uh, talked more about Minnesota and, and, and started an investigation. It's going to continue an investigative probe, a civil probe, to examine whether the police have engaged in excessive force, discriminatory conduct, or abuse, those with mental or physical disabilities and try to get at the pattern or the broader practice of pattern uh, investigation into the department aims to root out more systemic problems within local police agencies and efforts that have been used by the DOJ, not just under the Obama administration, but also by George W. Bush administration to pursue settlements with departments to have found engaged in repeated and abusive tactics. So members and Senator uh, Gazelka, can you elaborate what type of hearings are we going to be discussing these issues? Um, I know that at one point uh, you had announced in a press conference that it was going to be a fact-finding uh, hearing. Uh, now that we have this announcement by the federal government looking at Minnesota again, uh, can we be assured that you are um, and your body and your, your leadership is going to take into account those areas that the probe is going to be focused on in the legislation that we are expected hopefully to hear in these um, uh, hearings that you're talking about a week from Friday. Senator Gazelka. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Senator Franson, you may recall that last June 23rd it was uh, uh, the, our leadership, Senate Republicans, that made that request to the federal government. Uh, and so that's uh, part of, the, I think, the plan to, to be take an objective look at what's going on uh, you may also remember that in July we passed the most comprehensive police accountability bill that I can remember. Uh, somebody's going to have to show me when uh, any other uh, legislative body in Minnesota has passed uh, the breadth of the police accountability bill that we did. And so we, we, in the hearings we certainly want to make sure we understand a baseline of where are we, what, what does Minnesota do. Uh, the fact that uh, the federal government is, is going to do what they're going to do uh, means that we'll continue to look at this, not just during the session, but with other, what other um, things that they come up with uh, as well. And so I, I still am not saying we will definitely do uh, more police accountability this, this next four weeks. Uh, there may be something. I'm not saying we will not. Uh, I just know that we have to pass the, the budget bills. Uh, as we watched uh, the verdict yesterday, I don't think anybody can say that justice wasn't served. Uh, and, and so we have a process that works, and then we have things that we have to be willing to look at uh, as we move forward. And so we, did, we started that last, last year. We said we were going to uh, do major police accountability. We did major police accountability. And now we're saying we're going to do hearings. I'm willing to listen. and. Uh, we'll see where it ends in the next three or four weeks. Senator Franzen. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Gazelka. Just to clarify, the Trump administration actually opened the federal civil rights investigation days after Floyd. Uh, Mr. Floyd passed away or was killed by police. Uh, that's different than what's happening today. So I just want to clarify, there are two different agencies in the federal government. Uh, there are different tracks, and this is a, a new announcement just of late of today, this morning. So, uh, Mr. President, Senator Gazelka, I just want to make sure that you take the newest uh, information coming from uh, our Justice Department at the federal level and that those concerns are also addressed by uh, this body and this legislature, this legislative session. It's our duty to not uh, wait to the next session, but to take those um, measures and, and information and not just fact-finding, but legislation that could contribute to avoiding continuing to have the spotlight on the state of Minnesota and have some purpose of what we've all gone through in the last year. So Mr. President and Senator Gazelka, I really encourage that you take a look at the, the information that came out just today and bring that information to those hearings. Thank you. Senator Gazelka. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and, and to all members. Uh, the, the Senate is a deliberate body, and we have done great work as, as you look back to just last July. Uh, and the, the, the side we have to be careful with is if you push too fast on something without doing our, our duty to make sure that we're looking deeply into it, 
sometimes you, you do things that then other people will say are unconstitutional, and so that was, is a result of our uh, deadly force and how we changed that. Now we're trying to figure out if, if we did it exactly right. And so we want to make sure that everything we do is done, we get it right, we get it right the first time. And part of that is taking the process to listen, to do hearings, and not necessarily be confined to uh, the next three-week period. And so we'll see. I mean, that's, that's why I'm, I've expressed openness, that we're willing to listen, but not promising that we will do something in the next three weeks, but we'll have to wait and see. Any further announcements of Senate interest? Senator Gazelka. Uh, members, I guess tomorrow we're going to have education and transportation omnibus bills, so just to be aware that's coming. Mr. President, I move that the Senate do now adjourn until Thursday, April 22nd at 10 a.m. Senator Gazelka moves that the Senate do now adjourn until Thursday, April 22nd, 2021 at 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. The Senate is adjourned.